In this video, we're going to talk about measures of position. Measures of position describe the relative position of a certain data value within the entire set of data. So to introduce the first measure of position, let's start with this example. In this example, we're going to talk about Wexler IQ test, which measures a person's intelligence. Um, it says that people's IQ scores are normally distributed and mean, which is the average, right? Um, score is 100 points, standard deviation, something that measures the spread is 15 points. So let's say that a student's IQ is 130 points. Here's the question, how many standard deviations above the mean did that student score? Well, we can look at the picture or it's actually not that hard to see that student scored 30 points above the mean, right? 100 is the mean, 130 is the student scored. 30 points above the mean. Okay, but how many standard deviations is that? Well, if standard deviation is 15 points, then it's exactly two standard deviations, right? In here, we, get, we can fit two standard deviations. Okay. Um, if we don't have picture, if we don't make that chart, we can also calculate that algebraically. And that's the way to do it. So algebraically, what we need to do first, we need to find this difference, right? So pretty much this follows the steps we took here. So we find the difference by taking the actual score, subtracting the mean, and that gives us 30, right? And then we'll have to see how many standard deviations can fit in that um, in that number, we need to divide by the standard deviation. So if we take 30 and divide by 15, we get 2. So that's how we can explain that algebraically or show that algebraically. Now, we can see that students scored exactly two standard deviations above the mean. And that can be rephrased differently. We can say that the z score is 2 and write z equals 2. So z-score is the number of standard deviations above the mean or below the mean. So every data value is going to have the corresponding z-score, which will tell how far or which, indica which will indicate how far that specific data value is above or below the mean, but in terms of standard deviations. Now, here's the formula for finding the z-score by hand. And if we look at this formula, we will see that it resembles this little equation that we put together. So x represents the observation. In our example, it was 130. x bar represents sample mean, right? So this formula is given to us um, for the sample. If we can put together this formula for the population, uh, we just have to switch notation, right? Change notation. So x bar is the sample standard uh, sample mean, and in the, in the denominator it's a sample standard deviation. Now z score can be either positive or negative, and why is that? Well, in our case, z score is positive, right? Why is positive? Because well, we only use positive numbers here, right? One thirty minus one hundred that's a positive positive thirty positive thirty divided by fifteen it's two. But in which case we would get negative z score? Well, in general we get negative results when the first value, when we're subtracting, of course, when the first value is less than the second value. So what does it mean in the context of this formula? Well, it would mean that the actual observation or the data value is less than the mean, right? And that's going to happen if our observations lie to the left of the mean, if they're below the mean, right? So we can summarize that. We can say that observation to the left of the mean is going to have negative z-score, and observation to the right of the mean is going to have positive z-score. Z-score of an individual data value tells how many standard deviations that values from its population mean. Let's see if we can redefine the empirical rule in terms of z-scores. Well, here's the picture describing uh, the empirical rule, right? Uh, remember that According to the rule, 68% of data values lie within one standard deviation away from the mean, and it's of course only for approximately bell-shaped or normal distributions. 95% of data values lie within 
two standard deviations away from the mean and then 99.7 percent almost 100 percent of values would lie within three standard deviations away from the mean but now as we defined the number of standard deviations from the mean um, as the z-score let's redefine the empirical rule in terms of z-scores so this is what i can say um, when value is positioned right at the mean it's z-score equals zero right because when we're right at the mean where is zero standard standard deviations above or below so z-score is zero okay as we move to the right one standard deviation and to the left one standard deviation at those places so right at this place whatever value is um, positioned here if we have one in the data set we're going to have uh, we're going to have value that has z-score exactly one and right here if we have certain data value uh, at this place its z-score is going to be negative one we also can say that values with z-scores between negative one and one make 68 percent of the entire data, um, data set and um, hopefully you got the idea now we can continue and um, look at the place where that's two standard deviations below the mean so data value that's positioned here if there is one will have z-score negative two and then data value that that's positioned here will have z-score two so it's exactly two standard deviations above the mean right and then all data values with z-scores between negative two and two will make 95 percent of um, all observations and so on and so forth so now we can make that same analogy for uh, three standard deviations above and below and then values that are positioned here and over here there's z scores or negative three and three respectively and that's that's explanation of the empirical rule in terms of z scores and now we're going to look at another measure of position it's called percentile so let me ask you this question um, and I'll give you like a few seconds to answer it to yourself. Suppose that you scored 27 points. How good did you do? Well, it's kind of hard to say because just not just knowing number of points and not knowing anything else, you know, it's hard to say, right? How about if I tell you that you scored 27 out of 40 points? How good do you do now? Well, it's still hard to say right is 27 points good or bad it was like very hard test and 27 points is good or maybe it was very easy exam and then it means that 27 points is bad so we don't have enough information to really make the judgment right so we're not sure but what if i tell you that suppose that your score is greater than or equal to approximately 98 percent of other scores in other words 98% of students got scores that are below than yours. How did you how good do you do in this case? Well, with all that information, now we can see that it's actually a very good result, right? If your score is greater than or equal to approximately 98% of other scores, it means that you're in the top 2%. Well, now this kind of way to describe certain data value, which was in this case points right 27 points um, this kind of way is called percentile so when we look at the certain data value 27 points and we know that 98 percent of other values are less than that or i should say less than or equal to that then this data value is also called 98th percentile so in general we say that if a certain data value corresponds to a specific percentile like here 98th percentile it could be 50th percentile or 75th percentile that means that that percent of observations of other observations 98 percent 75 percent 50 percent of other observations are less than or equal to than this value so in this case 98 percent observations are less than or equal to the one we're looking at so that's that's percentile and that's another measure of position.